Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Canard from our FT Easy 3 starter pack. Now the reason it's called the Easy Canard is because that's the actual name of the configuration of this airplane. Oftentimes when you see a typical plane flying through the air, you may see something that's similar to what you see with our C-17 here. You have a main wing, you have a horizontal tail services, and you have a rudder. And typically the horizontal tail and the rudder are by each other. In this case with the canard, it's actually in front and it's no longer called a tail anymore. It's called a four wing or a four plane. In other words, you have your main wing and you have your four wing. Both the wing on the front and the wing on the back create lift for you. And if you've seen some of our favorite videos like the flying tank. A kayak. One, things like that, we needed the ability to lift the airplane from the front, not actually pitch it from the back because there's no way to rotate the whole airplane. This is one of the really cool benefits of a canard style airplane. Along with that, because both wings are actually creating lift, this wing is designed to be able to stall before the main wing does. Typically when you take an airplane up and you stall sharply, the wing will give out and the tail will keep flying, which means it'll break real hard. The really cool thing about a canard design is when this wing here stalls, this wing here is still flying. So what you'll see instead of a hard break, you'll actually see where the nose will just kind of tip down and it'll keep flying. It's a really cool safety feature, but it's also something that's been used to stabilize things like jets, really fast airplanes like the Long Easy. It's an incredibly efficient design and it's also really beneficial to characteristics. One of the reasons we're really excited about you guys building a canard is because we want you to see the benefits not only with fast aircraft, but also with slow flying aircraft and how especially with just two simple motors, this plane is going to fly wonderfully. We're going to be talking more about the canard as we build, but let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. For this build, we're going to need some hot glue, some tape, and if you choose to use a razor blade, you can, but you can pop all these pieces out without the help. If you're working with a younger group, make sure you help them out if they do need to use a razor blade. Let's go and pop out our pieces. All right, now that we have all of our pieces popped out, let's go ahead and talk about each piece. This is going to be our main wing. This is going to go in the back portion of this airplane. This is our dihedral gauge. We're going to keep this by the airplane. This is going to give us the dihedral, and we'll talk more about that in a second. We're going to have our four wing. We're going to have our fuselage doubler that's also going to help give strength to our canard and our battery. And then we have our main fuselage piece, including our vertical tail. Let's go ahead and put our attention towards the main fuselage since everything is going to fasten to it. To prep our fuselage, all we need to do is we need to remove the paper on the center section like you see here. The first thing we're going to do is just do a quick test fit to make sure everything lines up properly. We're going to want the cutout to be around our etch lines. This is where our control board is going to go. We're also going to want to line up the slot for our main battery and our four wing. Once we're happy with the way that looks, We'll flip this over and we're carefully going to put a little bit of glue all around the perimeter. And then we're going to line it up again. I like to start right where the control board is and then slowly work forward, making sure that the battery slot and the four wing slot are perfectly horizontal. There we go. We're going to give this about 30 seconds to dry, and then we'll do the other side. Now that the one side of our doubler is glued on, we're going to go ahead and roll this over 180 degrees, and you're going to see that's going to line up really nicely with the other side here. Once we're happy with that, we're going to go ahead and do the same process as before. Just around the perimeter, a little bit in the middle. Then we're going to fold it up and over making sure that our four wing and our battery slot are nice and lined up. So you're going to see that our doublers are now in place. You're going to have the battery slot. This is where our battery is going to friction fit through. And also our four wing is going to place through here. Now you're going to notice something that the battery slot is parallel to the surface of the wing and also the top of the fuselage. But our four wing slot actually has an angle up. That's a positive angle of attack. And what that's going to do is as the plane flies through the air, this is going to create lift before the rear tail is. And just like I talked to you before, how the four wing will stall before the main wing, this is going to create the lift that you need to be able to elevate and lift the airplane up. But also, if you get too sharp of an angle of attack, 
This wing will stall out first, bringing the nose down, keeping the main wing flying. That's why this airplane is so incredibly stable. Our next step is we're going to install our forewing. Now you're going to see that there's a higher radius on the front edge of the forewing, and this is going to be the front side. So we're going to go ahead and take this, and I do like to kind of pinch just a little bit to make this pass through a little bit easier. So just going to roll these two pieces together just a little bit, so as you push this through, it doesn't snag. On the back side, I'm just going to use my fingers and support the fuselage as I pass this through. You're going to notice two little hatch marks right here in the middle. And what we want to do is we want to pass this through until it lines up with the middle. There we go. Just like that. If you lined up your doubler properly, you're going to notice that this is going to be nice and perpendicular to the side of the fuselage. Now that our four wings installed, we'll go ahead and put this aside. We're going to put our attention towards the main wing. Now the first thing we want to do with the main wing is we want to give it a little bit of dihedral. What dihedral is going to do is it's going to give the plane a natural self-righting tendency by the natural angle and the wing. To get the proper angle of dihedral, we're going to use this little dihedral gauge that you see here. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use our nail to slightly crease along here and open this up. Once we have that, we're going to just take this to the edge of the table and we're going to drag both sides down just a little bit. Not too hard. But what we'd like to see is a natural angle where this is not fighting us and it can lift up naturally. We're going to take our dihedral gauge and we're just going to friction fit it right at the edge of the wing like this. Now we're going to take a bead of glue and we're going to place a light bead of glue right along the center portion of the wing and then hold it down on the ground. This would be a really good time to take a scrap piece of foam and scrape off the extra glue. We're going to hold this in place for about 45 seconds and let it thoroughly dry. Once this is dried for about 45 seconds or a minute, you're going to notice that when you pull this off, that the wing doesn't move. We now have the proper angle of dihedral that we want, so when the plane banks one way or the other, the low wing is going to generate more lift than the high wing. This is going to cause the plane to naturally right. Now too much dihedral is going to make the plane very difficult to turn. Too little dihedral is going to make it kind of skid through the air and be inherently unstable. This is the magic amount of dihedral that we really want for this airplane, but when you're designing your own, you can experiment with your dihedral to get different characteristics of stability. If you want something that's more maneuverable and a little less stable, go with less dihedral. If you want something that's more stable and doesn't turn as easy, go ahead and go with more dihedral. Our next step is to join the two. So we're going to go ahead and slide the rear wing into the fuselage. I'm going to be careful right about the part where it goes to slide into the front of the fuselage here. And then we're going to keep on pressing forward carefully until it seats all the way down into the front notches of the fuselage doubler. There we go. Now it's really important to check the back end of this wing to make sure that it's lined up between the layers of the foam. This is going to make sure that your wing is nice and even and that it's not going to make the plane want to turn one way or the other. You're also going to want to make sure this is even so your tail doesn't naturally curl one way or the other because that will act as a rudder. And what the rudder will do is give a yaw input and make the plane want to turn really flat. Once you're confident everything is nice and true, we're going to take a little bit of hot glue and go down each side. really important that you don't put too much hot glue on these airplanes because weight is very sensitive. If you put too much hot glue, it's not going to give you more strength, but it is going to give you more weight, and you may notice that the airplane's not going to fly as good as you want it to. Our airframe's now complete, but it's still not ready to fly, and there's a really good reason for that. Even though it has its four wing, its main wing, its vertical stabilizer, and everything's put together, the plane is imbalanced. There's something really important on every airplane called center of gravity. The center of gravity is not where it balances perfectly in the middle, but it's where it needs to balance to make sure both the forewing and the main wing fly properly. So for this reason, if we're going to fly this non-RC, we include a couple extra weights, which is nothing more than a couple nuts that you can actually put in the battery slot to make the plane balance and fly properly. The way we're going to do this is we're just going to go ahead and push it into the battery slot. I always like to start a little bit more nose heavy than I anticipate and then dial it back later. I'm also going to go ahead and use this extra barbecue skewer I have lying around, but you can use a paper clip or anything else you need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this little barbecue skewer through the two holes that are on the side of the fuselage, and now what I can do is I can hold it. You're going to notice that the plane just kind of dips just slightly down, just like that. 
that's exactly what we want to be able to have the airplane start to fly good. Now you can adjust this based on your taste, but keep in mind, if the plane isn't stable directionally or pitch wise, you're gonna need to move that center of gravity forward more. A plane without any center of gravity is not gonna fly at all. Now that we've talked about center of gravity, let's go ahead and remove those nuts and put in our electronics so we can go out and fly this under radio control. These planes are made to fly up of what we call the Easy Pack. The Easy Pack is going to include your transmitter, your main control board, a battery, charger and props, and your motors. This is going to give you everything you need to make this airplane fly. Let's go ahead and pop off the parts and we'll put them on the airplane. The first thing that we're going to put our attention towards is our control board. Now this control board includes the same lower housing that you see on the C-17 and that's because this is the exact same electronics as our C-17 FT freighter. What we want to do is we want to actually remove this little control board simply by lifting up the prong and popping it off. Now that we have our control board, it's really important that we mount this in the right direction. The way we're going to know the right direction is that the main battery lead here is going to be pointing towards the nose. So in other words, as we mount this, we want to sit just like this. Now you can use a piece of double-sided tape or you can use a couple drops of hot glue to mount your board. If you plan on hopping your electronics from one plane to the other, I strongly recommend using a little bit of foam double-sided tape. Now that we know the right direction for our control board, we're going to go ahead and lay out our motors here. You're going to notice that one motor says left, that's going to go on our left side. The other motor says right, that'll go on our right side. Now whenever we're mounting our left and our right motors, we're going to want the airplane sitting as if we're in the cockpit. In other words, I have this plane pointing away from me and towards you nice folks just to show that I'm in the cockpit here. Our left motor will now go on our left side, our right motor will go on our right side, just like this. We can now pop off these little tabs that you see here and make room for our motor mounts. Now that we've identified our right motors and our left motors, we're going to flip this upside down recognizing that the right side wing is now on our left side because it's upside down. Our next step is we're going to install our motors simply by setting in the groove. Now we could use hot glue for this step but I want these electronics to be able to hop not only through the other additional designs but also through what you're going to design as well. So I'm simply going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to put a piece of tape down on each side of this wing and pull it nice and tight and wrap it around on the other side. This is going to be everything we need to give a nice secure connection to our motor and our wing. Press it down firmly and wrap it around. We're going to do this on the other side now. Alright, now that both of our motors are installed, I'm going to take this one motor lead on my right motor and I'm going to pass it through the little tiny hole on the side here. Making sure that my LEDs and my switch and my battery lead are pointing towards the nose. I'm going to go ahead and pass the little connector here. And it's just going to be just enough of a fit. There we go. Once I've passed my white connector through, I'm just going to put a little drop of hot glue on each side. I want this to be light enough where it will break free easily so I can swap it out between airplanes. Again, you can use double-sided tape if you wish to make it even easier to swap from one plane to the other. Our next step is to plug the white connector into the white port just like you see here. Now that our connection's made, a little tiny piece of tape will dress the wires up and keep them out of the way. Let's do the same process on the other side. We're going to connect our red connector. So we're going to address the wire leads. At this point we're going to do the exact same process that we did before with finding the center of gravity but instead of using two nuts this time we're going to use our battery. Now it's really important before you go out and fly that you fully charge your battery. To charge your battery first plug in the USB charger to either a USB port in your computer or an AC adapter to USB. Once your charger is plugged in go ahead and connect your battery. Look for a red light to light up. When the light goes out your battery is fully charged. Make sure any time you charge your new battery that you reinsert your USB connector into the USB port to reset the charger. Once our battery is fully charged, we're ready to do the exact same process as we did before when we were making this a free flight. But instead of using nuts, we're going to use the battery. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert this battery right through the battery slot. 
And again, I can go with a paper clip or I can even go with our little bamboo skewer here just to kind of give you a good visual here of where we want it. Now it's a little bit nose heavy or tail heavy. So we're gonna move this all the way forward. You're gonna notice with the battery all the way forward, it just gives me just about that nose down that I'm looking for. That's exactly what we want to make a proper center of gravity. This is the setting that we want to look for whenever we fly for the first time. Once you've flown it for the first time, you can experiment with sliding the battery back and forward to get the best characteristics that you want to see fly for your airplane. Now that we have our center of gravity figured out, we're ready to go ahead and make our connection with our battery and also bind it to our transmitter before going out and flying. First thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our battery and then we're going to go ahead and switch our control board on. Lay your plane nice and flat on the table. And with batteries installed in our transmitter, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our transmitter. Now you're gonna notice a fa fast flashing here and a slow flashing here. Our next step is we're gonna move the throttle all the way up and then all the way back down. This is gonna automatically bind this transmitter to this airplane. Now this will be a step that you'll need to do every time before flying and always make sure that your plane is on a flat level surface and that it's not being jostled while you're doing this. Otherwise, the gyros may be messed up and you'll want to reinitialize this process all over again. Once you've done this, you should hear the motors rev up whenever we give throttle, but also when you rock it, you should hear that differential thrust and that stabilization taking place. Now, something really important to know, if you go ahead and rock this and the motors actually exacerbate the problem, most likely your connections are backwards and you need to change that. At this point, our plane is all balanced out. We have our transmitter bound. We have our airframe built. Let's go out and fly. All right, friends, our FT Easy Canard is ready to take off for a flight. We got our CG ready. We got it linked up. We're ready to fly. A couple tips here. This is actually my backyard here, and you can see it's not very big. Because of that, I don't want to be flying this in low rates, which is defaulted whenever you link your radio. To change that, all we're going to do is we're going to hit our rates button one time and make sure that center light is flashing. Once the center light's flashing, we're in high rates. That's where I'd recommend for you guys to fly, unless you're really comfortable. You can always switch to low rates, especially if you have a young child or a wide open area. All right, as always, we're gonna launch into the wind and see how she flies. Now, hands off, it should fly just nice and normal, just a little bit above half throttle. We're just gonna go ahead and turn her around here, and you can see it flies pretty much with one hand. We're gonna be flying about 60% throttle here, and the gyros are gonna do a wonderful job with keeping it flying stable and easy. Let's go ahead and bring it around. Right around 50% should be about a level flight, maybe just a little bit of a descent. And whenever you're transitioning from into the wind to down the wind, be prepared to give it a little bit of throttle if you need. And you can see it'll automatically react. We're flying in the middle of the day here. We got a little bit of thermals, a little bit of bumpy wind. This is generally an easy, uh, low wind or indoor flight. You're not gonna wanna fly this in windier weather. One thing I like about the canard is when you give it full throttle here, it's not going to pitch up or stall out on you. It's only going to pitch up as much as that front uh, uh, wing is going to allow it to, and it'll keep it flying nice and smooth. Whenever you're descending in flight, always make sure that you don't just chop the throttle completely because then you're kind of cutting out what your motors can do for you. Always keep about 10% throttle until right before you hit the ground. You can see, even though we have a little bit of wind today, she's performing beautifully. With these models, if you want to climb, you give it more throttle. If you want to descent, you give it less throttle. <laughs> there we go. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the flight test family. Also, we're really excited to see how you learn, how you build, how you fly, and also how you design with this new FT Easy 3-pack. Please make sure you check out our curriculum down below if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.